All right, so for the third and final part of this solo before we go and put it all together, these licks are over the turnaround section, so starting on the five chord, which here is a D minor seven, then to our four, and then to our one. So what we have here is we ended our second section of the solo by basically working our way from the second position of the G minor pentatonic down to the first position. And we took a look at also how we could use a little motif or idea that repeats in different octaves to outline this. Now we're going to have a similar motif here in this section. And here we're all in that first position of the pentatonic. We're gonna start off on the D string and at the fifth fret there, basically our root and So what we have there, the tricky thing about it is we have that string skip where we play up the scale and then I do a half step bend there and jump all the way up to the, the root note, the G at the third fret of the high E string. And then I come right back down to the fifth fret on the G, but instead of another bend, I use one of those little slides that we've already introduced. So I'm continuing that motif that we were using in the second section. So all together. And at the end, I just put kind of an end on it by going from that note basically down to the root there, to the G. And then, I repeat that same phrase. One of the things that I think gets overlooked a lot in building great solo is repetition. Of so many times I'll hear a soloist play a great phrase and then go right to another phrase and I never hear anything that relates back to that lick again. But when I listen to the really great soloists, really great blues players, whether it be a BB King, Albert King, Freddie King, so any of the three Kings, Stevie Ray Vaughan, modern players, you know, whether it be a uh, Kirk Fletcher, Josh, Josh Smith, Joe Bonamassa, whoever, they all use repetition to enhance their soloing. So what I do after that lick is I go right back to that same idea of the half step bend at the fifth fret of the G, jumping up to the third fret on the E, and then that slide idea again. Same ending there, and now I kind of wrap it all up where I go. So I just put a little kind of bow on the end of it where I'm going back up to the G string there and then doing a little kind of roll off at the end where those can be a little tricky to get and make them sound exactly right because you want it to feel almost like rolling downhill where it tails off a bit. And you can do that a couple ways. Usually on that last lick, I'm picking that first note a lot harder than I'm picking those next two. I am using a pull off and occasionally, when they get fast enough, I'm almost doing a hammer on from nowhere where I'll do where I'm not even picking that note, especially on the A string. So, all together, that final section of our solo here sounds like this. The one last thing to pay attention to here is you'll notice that for a lot of those notes at the third fret of the G string, especially at the end where I go, they're not played totally straight. If I have that little bit of a bend to them, little bit of a squeeze there, which just gives it some attitude because listen to if I play this whole section without those little bends, it'll sound like this. I also, of course, took some of the vibrato out, which takes away some of the attitude, but with those little bends, takes on a whole new life, and what we have is this. And once I get to this section, I am starting to do some amount of alternate picking. I'm still using, I'd say, as many downstrokes as I can, because I want to keep that same energy that I had in the first two sections. But on some of these faster phrases, you start to have to use, use some amount of alternate picking. So now that we have this third section of the solo all figured out, let's put it together 
and play it over the track and get this solo working all as one. Okay, so that's our first track that we just played our first solo over, and we had a lot of cool ideas in there. You'll notice a couple of them were that uh, sliding motif where we added up here and down here and had it repeat a couple times. So seeing how we can take one idea and have it as a thread through a whole solo, and then also paying attention to the phrasing of all the licks. So noticing where there are rakes, where the vibrato is, and what kind of vibrato, basically how fast, how wide it is. And then one of the biggest things we touched on at the end is that ending phrase, getting it where you're sort of rolling downhill or falling off a cliff. And it has that really almost anticlimactic feel to it where it makes you want more. And that can work great in terms of if we were going to now tack another verse of soloing on top of this, gives you a nice place to lead into a next time through and maybe try some of these licks in your own configuration and with your own improvisation. 